For once upon a time, the world ended. The pens of historians were far too slow to capture who started it. But rest assured, by the time the last bomb fell, there were no casualties for it to cause. Our civilization had once reached for the skies, but was now torn down to craters. Human life on our planet was gone. Well, almost gone. As tension across borders rose and the prospect of nuclear war grew, the Western Confederation of States proposed the creation of a series of bunkers that would allow for mankind to survive the end of the world. The optimism of the electorate mistook our leaders' attempts to salvage civilization in the face of doom as wasteful government spending. The people rioted. The expensive problems of tomorrow were less important than the issues of today. An agreement was reached. The bill for the underground shelters would be split between the government and corporate interest groups. Instead of placing shelters in residential areas, the state would construct subterranean dwellings beneath popular businesses. The government would protect its electorate from certain doom, and corporations would be able to vouch survival of the nuclear holocaust in their marketing material. The end of the world happened quickly. Organization proved to be a problem. The settlement of Judy's cosmetics left a hundred middle-aged women to repopulate the earth. The safe haven of the Fidget Spinner Emporium saved a lone sales clerk. Zap's arcade left an army of 12-year-old boys to establish rule. Some vestiges of civilization, however, would hold. Customers of yesterday would become the founders of a new society. The nutrition paste dispensers would keep the people fed. Stationary electric bikes would keep the settlements bright. The hum of air conditioning would drown out the howl of the outside world. Soon the surface was forgotten. Exits out of the bunker were hidden behind drywall. The survivors would turn their sterile advertisement covered bunkers into homes. Yet drywall is brittle. Beneath the family restaurant of Funburger, an electric bike peddler was destined to walk upon the surface. <sighs> Seize all peddling, citizens of Funberger. You have exceeded your duties to our government. The power output from our peddling machines this week is the highest it has been all year. The outside world may be filled with poison and death, but your hearts are filled with industry and courage. The president smiles upon you. He has commanded a double ration of nutrition paste for all who keep the light bulbs of humanity lit. We should all enjoy the achievement from a job well done. Yet today, there is a special reward. It is time to announce the winner of the final burger. For a hundred years, the final burger has been displayed as a glistening memory of the old world. Yet the expiration day approaches and soon the burger shall succumb to the same fate that the surface world has. By decree of the president, the worker who has shown the greatest amount of determination in their peddling will be rewarded with a delicacy beyond words. A fun burger bacon cheese. Now without further ado, the calculations have been gathered. The most accomplished peddler is, by the seal of the state, the worker who has generated the greatest amount of power for our cause. The woman who generated 58,000 watt hours this week. My own flesh and blood. Lisa Bellman! Dad, everyone, I am so proud. It has truly been a journey. A journey of many sweat-soaked miles. <laughs> I bet this is how Roger Dickerson felt at the end of Burger Race. It's the best film ever! <laughs> This is the moment I have been waiting for since I first sat down on the bike. People made fun of me for doing leg crunches instead of going to prom. But guess what? I'm gonna eat a burger now, so pop! But I don't want to sound petty. I'm just happy. And I'll be thinking about all of you while I eat my burger. Well said, Lisa. The president and our people are proud of you. 
I'm proud of you. I hope the burger is as delicious as... Uh, what's this? Dad? What's wrong? Uh... Well, th this is highly unusual, but I suppose the, the President works in mysterious ways. Um, citizens of Fun Burger, it has been decided that the claim for the final burger will be shared between the two most industrious members of our community. A man who has traveled 55,000 watt hours. I invite onto the stage Francis Cook. What? Oh, hey, Lisa. Yes, missing out on prom really paid off. Boy, who knew that the both of us... Daddy, what is he doing here? This isn't fair. Lisa, hush. Be generous like the president. Truly a remarkable moment. Our leader rewarding two people who both worked hard for the glory of our civilization. But as the signs say, never share a fun burger. The president has decided that there is only one way to solve this dilemma. Through a pure game of chance. A coin shall be flipped to decide who deserves the prize. Whoever wins, Lisa. We both work really hard. The filling up just doing something really good for... This is not fair for... at all. I worked hard. I deserve the... Fellow citizens of Funburger, I present to you... Francis Cook. Wow. The last man to honor. taste the food Lisa, of the old world. Here together too. I hate you. Lisa curled up in her room and tried to deal with her rage. No one had ever been so cheated out of a victory as she had. She felt just like Roger Dickerson, and teens just want a fun burger. Cultural artifacts were a rarity after the bombs. Whilst Fun Burger Incorporated provided a bunker with nutrition paste dispensers, water purifiers, and enough pedal bikes to keep the power running, they did not invest in copyrighted film or literature. The first generation of customers had to forego entertainment. <laughs> The second generation of customers relied on depressing puppet theater about the world ending. The third generation, well, the third generation had Roger Dickerson. A man who thought himself destined to be a lead, but casting agents saw as a featured extra at best. Roger's last attempt at a life of fame had been his lead role in a series of poorly written, poorly shot and poorly acted films made to promote the Funburger brand. These films were deemed too embarrassing for public distribution and were instead stashed away in a supply closet of the Funburger bunker. Ah, uh, so angry. Written during a single cocaine binge of a failing screenwriter and shot over four afternoons, Teens Just Want Funburger would be Roger's final film. Why won't my dad just let me go to Funburger? The film was based around the paper-thin notion of a father forbidding his teenage son, who was played by the 32-year-old Roger, to go to Fun Burger because he did not want his child eating burgers. Oh, I'm so angry I could punch a wall! Oh. Oh, why did I do that? While she may have felt like a teen who was being denied what was rightfully hers, Lisa did not know that that moment, when Roger's hand collided with the wall of the soundstage, his career ended. A dislocated shoulder and a cracked hand took Roger from acting to being a fry cook at Funburger. Lisa, I'm so sorry, honey. I don't make the rules. They, they're made by the president, and you know he is a fair and honest... D did you punch a hole in the wall? Leave me alone, Dad. You know that burger was mine. Lisa... Doesn't the knowledge that you help so much by peddling feel better than any old burger? No, go away! There's double rations down in the cafeteria, honey. Get out of my room! The president loves you, sweetie. Lisa was still angry. What an unjust world she inhabited. All she wanted was a fun burger. Ow! Why do I keep doing this? A gentle light escaped from the fist-sized hole in the wall. Whoa. Lisa crowned her head through the hole. A 
path of dim bulbs leading through an empty passageway towards a set of stairs. In her 19 years in the bunker, Lisa had never seen such a place. As Lisa got closer to the stairs, she considered moving back. Perhaps she should tell her father about this newfound passageway. Perhaps this journey was one that should be taken with. From the top of the stairs, another light beckoned. A harsher light. The light grew stronger. A heat lingered in it that she had never felt. No way. Everyone, into the bunker. This is not a drill. We are under attack. Lisa pressed her face against the metallic glass of the Funburger bunker door. The light was blinding at first, but slowly the world emerged, the remnants of what used to be a Funburger restaurant. A collapsed wall revealed what was left of the world, endless, charred, ruin. This was nothing like the movies. The Funburger uniform was meant to be worn by those who were happy, those who were full of pep, those that meant something. But there it was, draped around a skeleton. The president was right. The world beyond the bunker was truly doomed. Holy hamburger! She had been told that Francis was given the final burger, but at the far side of the restaurant, right by the grills, there laid a familiar red. Lisa, what are you doing here? Dad, there's a- Hush now, to your room. I come here to bring my daughter her double ration of nutrition paste that our president so kindly decreed. Dad, there's a burger fire? right outside the door. Hole in the drywall? The president lied. The surface isn't destroyed. Keep your voice down. I will not have you disrespect the government. But he lied. He did what was best for the people. There is a world outside, Lisa. But there is nothing to be gained from it. The president wants to keep us safe inside. But there are... Burgers! I can get what I deserve! There are more important things than burgers or justice, Lisa. If the people found out about the surface of the world, that would, that would be the end of Funburger. There is nothing out there for us. Maybe your grandchildren will be able to live in that world, but opening that door will do us no good. The president was very specific about this. I, I need you to trust me. Do you trust your dad, Lisa? Yes, Dad. Do you trust the president? Yes. Now how about you join me in the cafeteria? I'm not hungry, Dad. I, I love you. And the president loves you and, and his people. And he knows what's best for them. And, and I agree with him. And I'm your father. And your father loves you. I know, Dad. Okay, well, don't stay up too long. Okay, Dad. Lisa stayed up the whole night looking at the hole. What if the president was wrong? Was she not entitled to get what was rightfully hers? I'm not thinking about going into the hole, Dad. It's me, Francis. Please don't call me Daddy. I didn't say Dad. What are you doing here? It's the middle of the night. Are you here to brag about the burger? No, no, you, you deserve the burger as much as I do. I thought that maybe we can eat it together. The sign says never share a fun burger. Yeah, but we could, you know, break the rules like they did in Burgers for Love. It could be, you know, like a date. Or, you know, like two friends eating together. Do you punch a hole in your- I don't want your leftovers. It's okay, we don't have to eat it at the same time. We could cut it. I don't want your pity. I promise it's not pity, Lisa. I really... I can get my own damn burger. Get out of my room. Sweet dreams, Lisa. Um, 
You you look good without makeup. All of those leg crunches, those sweat-filled days on the bike, a lifetime of effort. She did not need his pity. Ow! Why do I keep doing that? She would get her own damn burger. Dad? Can we talk? What is it, son? I'm going to go to Fun Burger. I don't care if you like it or not. You will do no such thing. I forbid you. Well, let me finish, Dad. I I'm not listening to you anymore. Dad, I, I want to taste the bacon cheeseburger. There's been a hole in my heart since I was born, and I know that the bacon cheeseburger will fill it. It's going to make me whole. The secret sauce, the pulp meat, the freshness. These people know freshness, Dad. They know it. And I've been following your rules my whole life, but now I need to break free. I need to be rebellious. I need to go to Fun Burger. I didn't know you felt this way, son. I... I, I always wanted to go to Fun Burger, but... My father never let me. Damn the rules! Let's live life! These people know freshness. Let's go to Fun Burger together! Lisa stepped into the old world and paid respects to her Fun Burger ancestor. Thank you for your service. She made her way through the restaurant. Faces of photogenic people long gone smiled at her as they bit into their burgers. She would soon understand them. The bacon cheese was worth it. These people knew freshness. She placed her hand on it. The crumple of the wrapper. Songs were written about the moment before you took a bite. Uh, who are you? <laughs> scars. So many scars she could barely see his face. A beast on all fours. A burnt husk of sentience. Where are your burns? I... I just... Uh, this burger? I deserve it, and... Fun burger. Yes! <laughs> the beast had tripped over the corpse of the fun burger employee. She only had a second to act. In 1982, Funburger experienced a slew of child kidnappings from its restaurants. In order to stop the negative press and to lure back its young customers, a special public service announcement was commissioned. What do we do when a stranger wants to talk? We kick! We kick! We kick! And what do we do when they don't let us walk? We kick! We kick! We kick! What if a stranger tries to grab? We kick! We kick! A stranger in a van, looking for his lab. The president was right. She should have stayed away from the door. Lisa spent the rest of her night wishing she never punched the wall. Hey Lisa, look, I just wanted to apologize for yesterday. I was awkward and weird and... Look, do you want my burger? No, it's okay. Oh, come on, you can have it. I don't want it. I just want to see you happy. I bet watching you eat the burger is going to be better than... Whoa! You got another one? Your dad must be really tight with the president. Wow! We can eat these together, like it's a date. Like Roger Dickerson and... Lisa? Are... are you okay? His whole life was a series of missed chances, but the sting of this one brought him down to his knees. After the Funburger movies were cancelled, Roger discovered a world where a man spending 15 years trying to become an actor isn't very welcoming in terms of job opportunity. How's that burger coming along, Roger? There's a very disappointed young lady over here. I'm doing my best, boss. Well, maybe your best isn't good enough. Come on, hurry it up. I'm, I'm sorry, boss. Oh no. It's the moment they trained me for. Everyone, 
into the bunker. This is not a drill. We are under attack. Everyone down into the bunker, quickly. You! Stop cooking that goddamn burger and get inside. Roger, don't you hear me? Get into the goddamn bunker. Oh, what's the point? Whatever. You actors are such divas. It didn't matter much here. It won't matter much there. <laughs> It's okay not knowing what to do next you can say Your contemplations for another day And when the dormant gusts to it can blow the winds and change Lift your heels and we rain Oh, point all the big parade this episode of the Mosaic of the Apocalypse was sound engineered by Lee Clark and made possible with the voice chords of Sean Brodeur, Alex Montrio, Jen Kirk, Quaylon O'Neill Ford, Mike Jesus Langer, and Samuel Maddox. The episode was written by Mike Jesus Langer and Nicholas Allen. Credit music provided by Bucky Baker. Special thanks to Christine Gammon for allowing us to record in her kitchen and to you for listening. Subscribe, follow, or check back in a couple of weeks if you want to hear more episodes of the Mosaic of the Apocalypse. See you soon, unless the world ends. Then you found another Just remember that you always have a home from home And one day you surely find a mountain pressure Bring, bring it to your knees, push release And if you're unsatisfied by your surroundings Change, change the outcome of the game. Oh, oh, rearrange. Don't wait too long. It's just a gamble of the day. Clean your boots, dry your eyes. Get and find another way. Then get some goals and keep them. Try to meet them. When you beat them, make sure to celebrate the day. Some girls and keep trying to meet them. When you beat them, make sure they sell the